Hello! Today we get to talk about how things move when acceleration is constant. We talked a little bit about this problem in the last video, and now we're going to dive into it with more detail. Just as a review, velocity is the rate of change of position with respect to time, or the derivative of position with respect to time, and acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time, or the derivative of velocity with respect to time, which is equal to the second derivative of position with respect to time. It's the derivative of the derivative of position with respect to time. Well, since velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time, I can do an integral and go backwards, and I can find from the velocity, I can find the position. So position is the integral of velocity with respect to time. Likewise, since acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time, velocity is just the integral of acceleration with respect to time. And uh, since the integral of velocity with respect to time is position, we can also find position uh, by taking the second derivative of, or the second uh, integral, by taking the integral of acceleration with respect to time and then integrating that with respect to time. So before we talk about constant acceleration, let's try something simpler. Let's imagine I have a system with a constant velocity. If I have something moving at a constant velocity, what's going to happen? The position is just going to change linearly in time, right? That's the result that we expect. So let's go ahead and let's do some calculus and see if that's what we get. So if the velocity is constant, velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time, and position, then, is the integral of velocity with respect to time. Well, if velocity is a constant, that integral is easy to do. I just get vt. And then, of course, because this is an indefinite integral, we have to add on a constant. Well, what is that constant? Well, let's think about this. If x is equal to vt plus c, at time p equals 0, x is just equal to c. So c is just the position at time t equals 0. And so we will call that x naught. So instead of writing a c, we'll write that as x naught. And then x, as a function of time, is just x naught plus vt. So position is the initial position plus velocity times time. Now, if I plot this on a graph, right, if my velocity here in red is constant, the position, then, is just a straight line whose slope is equal to the velocity, all right? So that's exactly what we expected to happen. The integral, the calculus, gave us what we expected. So now let's talk about what happens if the velocity is changing, but the acceleration is constant. Uh, very often we have systems where acceleration is constant. If I have an electron accelerating in a constant uh, electric field, for example, or one thing we'll see a lot in this class is near the surface of the Earth, the acceleration of an object due to gravity is constant. All right, so let's consider what happens if the acceleration is constant. Well, if the accelerate, if we know the acceleration, I know that the acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. That means I can find velocity by integrating acceleration. If acceleration is constant, this integral is simply equal to at plus a constant. Well, what is that constant equal to? Well, at time t equals 0, a times t goes to 0, so the velocity at time t equals 0 is just this constant. So this constant is just the velocity at time t equals 0. So we'll write that as v naught, And then we plug that in, and we find that the velocity is just equal to v naught plus a t. If the acceleration is constant, then the velocity should change linearly in time. And that's what we found. So here's a plot. The green line is the acceleration, and the red line is the velocity. And as we expect, the velocity as a function of time is just a straight line whose slope is equal to the acceleration. Well, if the velocity is a line whose slope is the acceleration, what is the position? Can we find the position? Well, remember, velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time. So position is just the integral of velocity with respect to time. And in this case, velocity is just v naught plus a t. So if a, if the acceleration is constant, then x is just the integral of v naught plus a t with respect to time. Well, the integral of v naught is just v naught t. And the integral of a times t is one-half a t squared, and then once again, because this is an indefinite integral, we get a constant, okay?
But at time t equals 0, v naught t goes to 0, 1 half a t squared goes to 0, and we find that x at time t equals 0 is just that constant, that integration constant. So that integration constant must just be x naught. So then we find the position as a function of time is the position at time t equals 0, x naught, plus v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. So the velocity changes linearly in time. If I plot velocity versus time, it's just a straight line whose slope is the acceleration. The position has a constant, a term linear in time, and a term which is quadratic in time. So the position, the curve of the position as a function of time, will be a parabola. So here we go. So green is our constant acceleration. Red is the velocity, and because the acceleration is constant, the velocity is just a straight line whose slope is the acceleration. And then in blue, we have the position, which is a parabola, all right? Now, in the last video, we did this, and we specifically said the acceleration is negative g. It's downward at the acceleration of gravity, and we came up with this plot. All right, once again, the acceleration is constant. In this case, it's negative, which means the velocity is a line whose slope is downward, all right? And then the position is a downward pointing rather than upward uh, pointing uh, parabola. It's a, it's a downward sloping parabola, sloping downward curving parabola, all right? So we have the equations. By using calculus, we are able to find the, so assuming that the acceleration is constant, we were able to find the velocity as a function of time and the position as a function of time. And those equations, in order to find position as a function of time, I need to know the acceleration, the initial velocity, and the initial position. To find the velocity as a function of time, I just need to know the acceleration and the initial velocity. So let's do some examples with these equations, which we have derived. Here's one. I throw my keys up with a velocity of 10 meters per second. Then they come down and I catch them. How long will they be in the air? So I'm assuming that I let go of them and I catch them at the same height. Okay. How long will they be in the air? Well, we have this equation right here. The position is the initial position plus v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. And so I can say, oh, I throw them up at some position. I want to find the time when they return to that position. Well, first of all, since we're throwing up in the, it, usually we like to think of up not as the x direction. So we'll convert this to y. I throw them up in the y direction, all right? So I'm just replacing x with y. And our constant acceleration is going to be negative g. It's in the downward direction. And uh, finally, so that's what we're gonna plug in for acceleration. And we want to find the time when y is equal to y naught, right? We throw them at time t equals zero, they leave my hand at some, some height y naught. I'm going to catch them at that same height. So I want to find the time when y returns to y naught. So plugging those into the equations, I plug in y naught for y, I plug in negative g for my acceleration, and this is the equation I need to solve to find the time at which the keys return to my hand. Well, notice the y's not, y naughts cancel out, and so the equation I need to solve is v naught t minus 1 half gt squared equals 0. Now, this is a quadratic equation. I could use the quadratic formula. However, an easier thing to do, since all of my terms have a t, I'm just going to factor out a t. So this equation becomes t times v naught minus 1 half j, g times t equals 0. So in order for this to equal 0, either t has to equal 0, or v naught minus 1 half gt equals 0. Well, t equals 0, that's, well, okay, first of all, there are two times at which my keys are at that particular height, when I let go of them and when I catch them. t equals 0 is the time when I let go of them. That's not the solution we're interested in, right? We want to know how long we have to wait before we catch them. So let's solve this equation to find out how long the keys are in the air. Now this equation, uh, we just bring the 1 half gt to the other side, and then we can solve this for t, and we find that the time that the keys are in the air is 2 v naught over g. Now I just plug in my numbers. So v naught is 10 meters per second, g is 9.81 meters per second squared, and then I plug that into my calculator, and I find that the time that they are in the air is 2.04 seconds. Here's another example. 
I throw my keys up with a velocity of 10 meters per second, how high would they go? So this is the same situation, but now instead of finding how long they're in the air before I catch them again, I want to know how high they go. Well, how can I figure that out? Well, I've got an equation that tells me height as a function of time. So I just need to find the time at which they are at the highest point, and this will tell me what that highest point is. How do I find the time? I'm just going to maximize this curve. This curve's maximum happens when the derivative is equal to zero. Well, the derivative is just the velocity, right? Which is v is equal to the derivative of this, which is just v naught plus at. So when the velocity is equal to zero, right? They they go upward. They momentarily they they for an infinitesimal amount of time they come to a stop and then they start moving back downwards, right? So at the top of the curve, that's when the velocity is equal to zero. Now remember, the acceleration is not zero at the top. The acceleration is constant. Gravity is still pulling them down. So the keys go up in that moment when the velocity goes to zero, they're at the top of their trajectory. They're as high as they're going to go. If acceleration were zero, they would just stay there, right? But no, the acceleration is constant. The acceleration keeps accelerating them downward, so the velocity goes down until it reaches zero at the top of the curve, and then the acceleration then causes the velocity to increase in the negative direction. So it decreases to zero and then becomes more and more negative. But the time at which they are at the peak of their flight is the time at which the velocity is equal to zero. So we'll plug in negative g for the acceleration and then find, we just need to find the time when the velocity is equal to zero. Well, this equation is easy to solve. I've just got v naught minus gt equals zero. Solving that for time, I find that the time is just v naught over g. Well, there's another way I could find the time when they're at the top of the trajectory. I could just remember that I already found the time that they're in the air, the time that it takes them to go up and then come back down to the same height. And if I just note that the, that the flight is symmetric, that it takes just as long to go up a distance as it does to fall back down that same distance, well, the time that it takes them to get to the top is just half of the time we found in the last problem, the time that they're in the air. So I could just take 2 v naught over g, the solution we found to the last problem, divide by 2, and I get v naught over g, which is the same time we found before. So now we know how long it takes the keys to go from my hand up to the highest point. Now I just need to plug that into my equation for y. And my equation for y is y naught plus v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. All right. Well, I'm going to let y of t be their height above my hand. So I'm going to let the place where I let them go, y naught, be zero. And of course, a is just negative g. The acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, and it's in the negative y direction. So when I plug that in, y is just, remember, y naught is zero, so that's v naught t minus one half gt squared. And then I'm going to plug the time we found into this equation. We found the time when they're at the top of their trajectory. If we plug that into this equation, we'll find their position at the top of the trajectory. So I plug that in, I'm going to get v naught times v naught over g minus one half g v naught over g squared. Well, v naught times v naught is just v naught squared. So this is just v naught squared over g. Well, notice here I have v naught squared over g squared, but I have a g there, and one of the g's cancels out. So that term just becomes minus one half v naught squared over g. So v naught squared over g minus one half v naught squared over g is just one half v naught squared over g. I can plug my numbers in. v naught was 10 meters per second squared. Uh, g is 9.81 meters per second. Um, well, g is actually a little bit different depending on where you are on the Earth. It's a little smaller at the top of Mount Everest than it is at sea level, but 9.81 is a pretty good value to use. Um, so that's what we'll be using for uh, a lot of problems in this class. Some other textbooks use different values for g. Anyway, plug the numbers in and I find that my keys go 5.1 meters up. Here's one more example. Let's imagine they don't go five meters up because they run into a ceiling, which is two meters above the point I let go of them. I throw my keys up with a velocity of 10 meters per second. How fast will they be going when they hit the ceiling two meters above? Okay. Once again, I have an equation that tells me the velocity as a function of time. If I just know the time at which they hit the ceiling, 
then I can find their velocity. How do I find the time at which they hit the ceiling? Well, I've got an equation that tells me their position as a function of time. So I just have to find at what time they have gone up by two meters. Okay, so if I let the position where they leave my hand be zero and h is two meters, we just want to know when h when the when the position is h. And h, of course, is equal to y not zero, so it's just v not t minus one half g t squared. And I want to solve this for the time at which the keys have gone up by two meters. Now, factoring out a t doesn't help me because I don't have zero on the other side of the equation. I have h. But if we move everything to one side of the equation, I have a quadratic equation, which I can find the solutions to using the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula tells me that t is just equal to b, negative b, which is v naught, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4, a is one half gt times c, and of course c is h, and that's all divided by two times a. Okay, if we simplify this, uh, right, negative v naught squared is the same as v naught squared. Uh, four divided by two is two, and two times one half is one. So there is our equation. So there is the time at which the keys will be at a height of two meters above where I let go of them. Now notice there are two solutions because there are two times when the keys are at that height. If it weren't for the ceiling anyway, there would be two times, right? They go up, they pass the two meter point, they keep going up to five meters and then they come back down and then there's another time where they reach the two meter point going downward. Well, that's assuming constant acceleration. In this problem, we only have constant acceleration until they hit the ceiling. Then there's another acceleration thanks to the ceiling. But if it weren't for the ceiling, there would be two times where the keys passed the two meter point. I want the first one, right, as it's going up, right? It never gets to the second one. So the first one is the shorter time, the earlier time. So I'm going to get rid of the plus there and I'm just gonna keep the solution with the minus sign because that's the earlier time. Okay, so velocity is just v naught minus gt, and so I'm going to plug this time in, and I get v naught minus, and then t times g is just v naught plus the square root of v naught squared minus 2gh, which is just the square root of v naught squared minus 2gh. So now I can plug numbers in and find the velocity. The initial velocity is 10 meters per second, gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared, and the height to the ceiling is 2 meters above where I let go of the keys. Plugging that all in, I find that the velocity when it hits the ceiling is 7.79 meters per second. All right, that is the end of our discussion of motion with constant acceleration. I hope that was useful for you.